Do you want to improve and modernize your dull and boring Leon interior? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that by doing this ambient lighting modification on your door cards. Yep, it really is minus three in this car tonight. It's freezing and my fingers are nearly off. So let's get started. I'm Kev, this is North Coast Workshop, where you'll find content on car modification and DIY. Now, one of my most requested videos is this one I'm doing just now, and it's how to install this red ambient strip lighting in the door cards of my car. Now, we don't get much technology when it comes to ambient light inside the Mark II Leons. All I've got in my car, and I think this is coming across the range, is these two weird red spotlights that illuminate my knob. Gear stick, I meant, sorry. So. Compared to the Mark III Leons that have red strip lighting in the door cards and also the Mark VII GTIs, I've driven one and I've seen this nice ambient lighting as well. It's about time that we got the Mark II Leon up to the same standard. Yo Franklin, how's it going? Oh, hi Fred, how you doing? Lovely interior. Yeah man, you too. Hey guys, how you doing? Oh, oh. dear. Disclaimer, the cards in this were completely made up and by no means a true representation of Mark III Leon and Mark VII Golf owners. Any similarities are purely incidental. So in this video what I'm going to do is show you how to insert the light into this door card here and have it working alongside the electrics of the car. But this could apply to basically any door card at all. You can make it fit and look whatever way you want. So let's get started on doing this modification. Now I'm recording this voiceover a few days later and I apologise now if I sound snotty and bunged up. Uh, just a typical winter time cold. And we get started by removing this bit of trim along here and then also the large padded insert on the side of the door panel. That then gives you access to this part of the door switch here where it has an electric window switch. I'm going to lift this panel up carefully. There's five clips that hold it in, so just try and prise each clip out of its holder. Once you've done this, then unclip the wee plug from the back of the switch. And for doing this on the Mark II Leon here, what we're going to do is slide off this wee outer casing of the multi-plug. Now we're going to get a multimeter here and set it to the following settings. So the first setting here will give us an audible beeping noise when we make a circuit with the two pins. So what I'm going to do is put one pin on the end of the connector and then put one pin on the body of the car and then this should make an audible beep to show that the wire is connected to the body of the car. Next up we're going to change the settings on the multimeter to the following. Then pop the ignition on and we're now looking for 12 volts that have now appeared on one of the other wires. So placing one pin of the multimeter on the body of the car, just ensuring it's a good metal to metal contact. And then using the other pin of the multimeter, we're going to be touching the second terminal in. Now we all get a minus reading here because we've actually got the pins back to front, but it doesn't matter either way, as long as you're seeing the 12 volts that is there, minus or positive, it doesn't matter. You're seeing the 12 volts that are switched on. And multimeters are so useful to have as something in your toolbox. They can be used for a wide variety of jobs, such as what we're doing here, looking for a wire that switches on to 12 volts, or if we're looking to check for a ground wire, we'll get an audible beep. And also checking to make sure the oil meter is doing its job and supplying a charge to the battery when the engine is running. But please be responsible with it. Don't attempt to lick the end of the probes like a spanner. Don't try to charge your power-hungry mobile phone with it either. And definitely don't try to resuscitate your daughter's soft toy with it. It will not work. I've left a link down below in the description as well for you to get one yourself. So now we know what two wires we're going to be using for the LED strip light. We need to try and separate them as best we can. So what you can do is you can try and take the covering off the wires as carefully as possible. You shouldn't really do this like I'm doing here. It is quite dangerous because you might end up cutting the wires by accident. But just make enough space so you can get these scotch locks locked onto the two wires that you've got. So starting with the ground wire here, I am making a mistake. I'm just thinking about house electrics basically. I'd wire up plugs quite often and the common household plug in the UK the brown wire is the live wire and hence why I'm thinking the brown wire here should be connected to the red wire of the LED strip. It shouldn't be. The ground wire here of the car should be minus and that's connected to the black wire of the LED strip. So it's my mistake and I do sort of this in a wee while actually. So carry on fitting your scotch locks to each of the two wires that we found are the two we need. Make sure they're secure, the wires won't fall back out and then I just wrap them in a bit of insulating tape just to hold them securely as well. This was the quick fix I used to actually sort the connectors for the scotch locks I had back to the front. I basically just cut the wires, switched them around, and then wrapped them together and put heat shrink on top. 
Now before we fit everything back together, just a quick test to make sure we're getting power to this new LED strip light. Now the LED strip light I've got here is actually from AliExpress. Now if you've used them before, you'll know that delivery times do take a while. It's very cheap, I think it's under three pounds for the one I had here, so all four doors cost less than 15 quid. Just make sure you get the right spec for the one you're looking for, so you get various different connections like USB, cigarette lighter adapters, etc. But I just went for the standard wire connection here that I'll show you on the screen. Avoid the other ones, it just makes it over complicated. You just want the wee power block and then the two bare wires at the end and it makes the fitment so much easier. And of course, you can have different colors depending on the interior lighting you want in your car. And I'll leave a link down below in the description for the exact one I used. I ordered one meter in length, just so there wasn't too much excess in behind the door. But if you want to cover more of the door panel, maybe do a full loop around the panel of your door, then you order three meters, maybe five meters if you require them. And a quick side note, if you are looking for ones online and maybe ones closer to home like Amazon or eBay, there are some available. Just make sure you get the right kind though. There are ones that don't have this flat backing to them, so it makes them a lot harder to tuck into the gaps on door trims. Now I'm carefully just drilling a 10 mil hole at the side of the trim here, and this is to pass the LED rope light through and into this part under the switch. Plug it all together and then pull through some of the excess rope light that you won't actually need. Remember to put the wee cover back onto the multi-plug and then pop this into the back of the electric window switch. Now as you're inserting the panel for the switch back onto the door card, just leave a bit of the wire sticking out through the side here so we can pull any more excess back through this gap. So I like into a wee secret, I'm in the middle of doing another modification on the car which explains why there's a hole here and an S over here. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that video. Hopefully it turns out good now, otherwise that's a pretty crappy video to show you. Anyway, let's get back to the car. Now pop the insert for the door card back on and now you're looking for the best fit for this LED rope light along the edge of the door card. Once you find it and you've gathered through any excess through the hole at the side of the door card and into the bottom of the switch, just tuck it all in nice and neat. If you want to use a cable tie, you can to tie it all together and then pop your trim back on. And at the end here, I just use a plastic trim removal tool with a bit of fabric over the end of it to gently push the rest of this LED rope light into the trim nice and firmly. If you want, you can maybe use a wee bit of double-sided tape to hold the ends in place. A quick check to make sure our electric window switch still works and our job's complete. So just three more doors to do and at a later date on the channel I'll post footage of the overall look once they're all finished so keep an eye out for that. Now I've had as much luck with the wiring on this modification as I did with the wiring when I did the twin Hellhorn install on the car. If you want to see how to do that and the full video on it it'll be up here in the corner if you click on so we'll give that a click. As always hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, hit subscribe as well to catch more videos from the channel in future. I'm off inside now to warm my fingers up because I am bitterly, bitterly cold so I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Pardon me. <laughs> well, I actually was supposed to tell you the multimeter.